Hi. Several of you heard that there was a family in California that passed away in their van camper. Because of that, I've had several of you that have contacted me wanting to know if I'm okay in the van and if it's safe. We're going to answer that. First, I want to remind you that if you've not subscribed, please go ahead and do so. That's the best way to stay up to date on all of the videos. And it's always great to join the channel family here because what I have really is a family. I think proof of that is the people who contact me wanting to know if I'm going to be safe in the van. We're going to look at a couple of things that I do to help make it a little safer to be in the van. Let me toss out that I realize that nothing is foolproof, okay? There's always going to be that exception that one night where you take an unnecessary risk and things don't go well, you can't plan for every single thing, but you can come close. We're going to look at some things that I do to stay safe in the van. Make sure if you have any comments or suggestions that you leave those down below in the comment section. That's really important, not just for me, but for other people. Okay, so let's get started. One of the things that it looks like, well, it looks like the primary thing that may have happened to the family in the van is an overabundance of carbon monoxide. The best way to prevent that is to have air inside the van. There's a couple of things that you can do to help with that. For us, we installed a rooftop air vent. Yes, it was a little nerve wracking. Oh, excuse me, Tomlin. There you go. Let me scoot over here. Okay, Tomlin down. Now, because I have a service dog, I have a couple of extra precautions that I have to take. I'll get to those in a minute. They involve taking care of your service dog on the road. I actually may have done a video on that before, and if so, I'll link it down below. But we've installed this ceiling fan and it runs off of our solar array that we've got. I can push with a push of a button. I can bring air either into the van or I can vent out at whatever speed at whatever speed that I want to. The van install the fan install in the van wasn't bad more nerve-wracking than anything because when you go to cut a big hole like that in your van it's heart stopping so hubby did that not me but if you don't want it to vent with the fan let's say it's too loud or you just want some air um maybe you need a little warmer a little cooler you can just let this vent be open without the fan running and that gets air in and obviously if you can get air in you're less likely to have a problem with carbon monoxide buildup. The other thing that I have that I realize I actually don't have in the van at this moment is a smoke detector and carbon monoxide detector. I took those out. I was showing someone the terracotta heater that I use the other day, and I forgot to bring both the heater back in the van and the carbon monoxide detector. We've not gone camping, so I've not needed that. We just got back from a trip. So I'll put that back in, of course, before we go camping. And I leave it right up here on this so that there's plenty of airflow around it. Um, the other thing is I also have another one that goes up front. Because this is kind of sectioned off in the back and I sometimes do different things in the back of the van, man, in the front I like to have both. So I've got two carbon monoxide and smoke detectors. Okay. So another thing that you want to take into consideration, this family had blankets on all of the windows. The blankets are partially going to block 
airflow. So we have um, coverings for our windows that only block the window. And I feel like that's important because you're always going to have a little bit of air coming in the van just from the doors. Let me show you what I mean. I don't know if you can see that, but right in here in this crack, there's just a tiny bit of daylight showing. Now, granted, that daylight can be a real pain in the neck if you're trying to keep heat inside the van. But it's also another place where air can come in. And as we just heard from this family story, who they were found dead in their van, as we heard, that can be really important. Let me show you the shades. I actually made these. And if anybody wants to know how they were made, I'd be glad to do a video on them. But they're really pretty straightforward. Um, I took a product and put it inside these black plastic pieces. Now, this is just for demo purposes, and you can tell that I got the wrong one. But, of course, at night, if I was doing this for real, I would make sure I have the correct one for the windows. But this gives you the idea. It covers the window without blocking any of the airflow. And it's real quick to put up, and it's real quick to take down. Now, I like the speed. I like for things to be easy access, which brings me to another thing. Stow your stuff. Get a place for everything and stow it. The more you stow, the less you have floating around inside the van. Now, I will say, I've got a few extra things inside the van that are loose because of straightening back up from the trip. Normally, these things would be fully stowed. I have plenty of cabinets. I've got the pantry there, and I've got a larger cabinet right there. I hope you can see that. And so, those cabinets hold just about everything plus some that I would ever need. And... If you've got a solar system like we do, pay attention to the numbers on your controllers. Make sure that you're within parameters. You know, just look every day or every however often. Make sure that those numbers are within the range. If you plug something up, make sure that you have adequate safety on that. Um, there's a lot of things, a lot of fuses on products and things like that. If you overplug something, chances are you'll know. But just check the numbers and try to avoid anything. So, always better to be safe than sorry. If you don't have a solar on your van, you're possibly going to need an alternative way to charge your cell phone in case you ever have a problem. Phones, the batteries do go down. That's just life. So, I have this Bushnell. It's a solar charger. I have done a review on this before. Um, I can link that below. So, there you go. It also will charge by a USB port. So, if you're in a pinch and you need something that's going to charge quicker than in a couple of hours... You know, you can charge this on a USB. I say a couple of hours. Um, I think this takes around four from a complete um, decimated charge. Um, I'll have to double check that. Now I forgot. Also, alternative communication. If something goes wrong, you don't want to have to fully rely on your cell phone because you might be in an area where your cell phone doesn't work or, like I said, your battery could be down. I got this CB to use when I went to Alaska. It's got a pretty good range. I also have a magnetic antenna. Of course, when I'm not using it, it goes back in the box. Um, you can tell it's been worn a little bit by getting it in and out. 
but it gives me that secondary communication if I should ever need it. And hopefully you'll never need a first aid kit or a card kit. Chances are at some point something's going to go wrong. So I've, for that I have two things and I'll show you what I got. And let me just toss out that if there's something else I need to add, leave me a comment. So in the car care kit, I actually worked with the queen of San Joaquin. She's got a YouTube channel and she does some things about cars. Uh, she's actually a mechanic and she was able, me to, able to help me put a few extra things together. But let me just show you. Now, the kit came with its own flashlight and with its own set of batteries. And that's great, but batteries have a notorious thing to go bad. So, to combat that, I got a hand crank flashlight that I included in the kit. And I know some of this is redundant. Work with me here. In the kit, I also have a USB cord and a bullet point just in case. Plus, of course, jumper cables, a compass. Now, I actually won this compass at a giveaway at school, but I put it in the car kit just in case I needed it. I've got um, five bucks in here just in case I was to need gas and to, you know, be able to call someone to get gas for me and I needed to pay them. Safety goggles, wet wipes, a wrench, just some basic things, work glove. And I also have this. Um, it is a, another type of hand crank flashlight, but it has the advantage. It's got a phone charger on it. Now, this is great up to a point. The only way it's going to charge my phone is if I'm actually actively cranking. That's a pain, but the thing is, it is better than nothing. Barely, but it is better. And, of course, it does work. Let me turn that off there. I always have wet ones. That's just me, folks. I've also got a toe strap, which the Queen of San Joaquin suggested. Now, in addition to this, I have a first aid kit. Um, I took a first aid class at college here um, just a couple of months ago. I actually got my BLS certification for basic life support because of the mission trips that I go on. Um, but that gave me a person to talk to about putting a kit together. This standard kit by Just In Case um, was good. Oops, I've got that upside down there. Sorry about that. But I did add just a couple of things. I wanted a full tube of antibiotic cream, which you can tell I've already needed. And a couple of extra bandages. The thing about these kits are, you know, the products will expire when we're talking about cream. And I've got some alcohol sponges and a, a Tylenol and an aspirin. So you're going to want to periodically check your expiration dates. On those. I'll finish putting this up later. Next up on the list, you don't want your band to be too hot or too cool. A thermometer is very important. Um, this one only cost a couple of bucks. It was at Walmart and affixes anywhere. When I'm out on the road, I tend not to put it on the rib. It will stand up. So I put it more in the center of the van um, on this little platform here. Just like so. Uh-oh. What you see, Tomlin? I believe he sees the cat. Now, stowing is very, very important. I've got extra bungee cords all over the place. Um, actually, not behind me. <laughs> Normally, I have a bungee cord behind me, but I used it um, over here to help with 
um, the battery pack and a couple of other things I had. I've got the battery pack moved right now just because I am getting straightened up with the trip. Um, but normally this is bungeed down. And these things that you see, I've got a strap right across there, uh, but I still have some loose objects. So if we were to leave on a trip, actually all of those would be stowed with the doors to the cabinet in place. Um, you can see down here, Tomlin is important, very, very important. So I have this water bowl and I always have fresh water in it. Um, can you see that? Yes. Okay. I always have fresh water in it. Even if I'm just in the van doing a few things and he's in here with me, he's got water. Um, I actually have a fan down there also. And I'll run that fan if it's warm in here to help cool off the water. Now, I always want to make sure he's okay. So in the back, back here, let me show you. I have a thermometer hanging. Okay. That thermometer transmits to the receiver that I have up in the front. There can be a temperature difference in the van, especially if you're driving down the road. You don't get good airflow back here. I will have this fan running with the lid down um, and sometimes an extra battery fan. But I still, like, I'm just anal when it comes to this, okay? I like to make sure he's okay. So I have the battery hanging back here. And then I have the receiver up here. And there we go. Now, one of the other things about being safe in the van, get this down for a second. One of the other things about being safe in the van is I want to be able to leave in a hurry if need be. So I pull through my parking spaces. Like if I'm at Walmart, um, I'll pull through so I can get out easy if I need to. If I'm spending the night in a, a desolate park, let's say, um, like when I went to BLM lands up by the Arctic Circle, I made sure that I pulled around where I could go straight out in a hurry. It just gives me an extra element of safety and security because you never know if there's going to be like some weirdo that you want to drive away from. Or in the case of like BLM situations, uh, there could be a bear or a moose or something like that. And you might need to quietly and quickly slip away. I do something that I know is a little risky. And when I leave my key in the ignition and I just cover it with a jacket or a towel. Something that's quick to move, but a little nondescript. Because if I need to move in a hurry, the last thing I want to do is hunt for car keys. Try to figure out if they're in my purse, if something's been set on top of them, or whatever. So, let me show this. I've got my towel here, and there's my car key. So, if I need... So, if I need out, um, it's just a matter of turning this on. And I'm not hunting for anything, and it's already ready to go. So, yeah, that's pretty much how I stay how I stay safe in the van from lots of things. Um, it always comes up about Tomlin adding security to the van. Um, no, not not really. Um, you saw that the cat, if he was out, would have a reason to be nervous, but around people, not so much. Um, I think the size and the appearance maybe would help, but you can't rely fully on a dog for security. Um, and I do have a large water bowl that I sometimes sit outside the van um, just to let people know that there's a dog in here that's maybe a little bigger. Size may count. But as far as security, if he's in here asleep with me, he may not know what's going on outside. 
So don't rely on that. Um, another reason why I like having window coverings that I can just grab and pull down real quick is I can rip that down in two seconds as I come from the back up here to the front to get in the car to pull out. So what suggestions do you have for me? Make sure you leave them in the comments below. Again, if you haven't subscribed, do so. Uh, I welcome you to join the channel. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Oh, don't forget to give me a like. I knew there was something I was forgetting. Is there anything else I'm forgetting, Tomlin? Tomlin? Okay, I'll say no. He's now looking out the driver's side window, so why not? But again, thanks for watching, and click that like button, subscribe, and leave your suggestions for me down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys out, about, and online. Don't forget, live bodaciously. Go grab life and have fun. Bye.